I'm just going to go ahead. Johnny, would you come, my brother? And you can share whatever you want to share, but at the same time, um, I want you to introduce Pastor Francis and whatever God's put on your heart. Praise the Lord. Amen. It's good to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. 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 You know, as we were singing that song there, when the presence of God walks in a building, when the presence of God walks in a room, yeah. things change. That's right. Come on, John. Things change. Yeah. Devils begin to tremble. On, Sickness man. begins to flee. People yeah. begin to have hope. People begin oh, to have restoration. Love walks in the room. Amen. Do you know that you are filled with the Spirit of God? Yeah. You are the temple of the Holy Ghost. Yeah. That on. same power abides in you. That same power abides in you. On, because when you walk in the room, you are made in the image of That's God. Good. You That's have the good. Spirit of God. Amen. You have the power of God Almighty. Amen. Any sickness, any disease, whatever it may be, where people may be bound, they may be cursed, they may be whatever it may be, you hold the power through the Holy Spirit that God has enabled you to break. It. That is an awesome God, my brother and sister, that we serve. Amen? He is a God that is worthy of our praises. And we carry His presence. We carry His presence. I had a pastor tell me one time, he says, make sure that when you go somewhere to preach, when you go somewhere to testify, make sure you take God with you. Because sometimes you may get there and God may not be there. That's right. That's good. He says, you take God with you. I want to remind you today. I prayed that this morning that was up on my heart and I came down here and Pastor Mike started talking about it and I've heard that word remembrance spoken several times this morning. Remember. Remind. Peter spoke and he said, I want to remind you, church, of the gifting that is in you. Yes. The gifting of the Holy Spirit. The power that is in you. The power of the Holy Spirit to move forth in conviction. The gifting that you carry to move forth in the power of God yes. that you carry. I want to remind you and stir you up with that you, because Lord. people need what you have. Yes. Because yes. you have God and God is the only hope. Amen? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Lord, I'm about to preach. Come on, go, bro. Go, bro. I didn't come to preach this morning, but I feel God wanting to stir His people, wanting to remind yes, them. Yes, you know, it may be discouraging, but God is light. He said light upon the darkness. Amen. Where there is no hope, He is. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Well, I want to share with you, and I want to turn Brother Francis loose this morning because when he gets the microphone, you may not get it back. <laughs> I met Brother Francis a few years ago. Uh, he does a great work in the Gambia. He works there, and what he does is he's an associate pastor of the church. Him and Pastor Bidwell is his senior pastor. They go into villages, and they take the gospel. Amen. They go to people that have never heard the gospel before. The area that he is in is an Islamic is an is, is Islam. He goes and preaches the gospel to Islam. Yeah. They know a God, but they don't know the God, right. Jehovah. Right. Yes. Amen? Yeah. And what he's going to share with you today, and he's going to show you some pictures, and he's going to share some things, some testimony of the Gospel. Of the Gospel. A lot of times we forget that we was empowered with the Holy Spirit to witness. Amen. That's why we got it. It ain't so that we can shout and jump and speak in tongues and lay hands on it. It is in the power to witness. Amen. You carry the witness of God. When Amen. somebody sees you, they see God. Amen. And when they see God, what's the representation of God that you are going to show them? Because we are ambassadors. Right. Yeah. When we walk into a room, people should know the presence of God. Yes. They should sense the presence yes. of God. Amen? Amen? Hallelujah. My brother, he has a great family. You'll see some pictures here today. But what I want to... Turn him loose and let him share with you some of the things that he's doing and hear the testimony of our God that is not only working here in America, but he's working That's all right. around the world. That's Amen. Right. We are a body of one. Yes. We are a body of one. Right. We are a body of one. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. But if you would this morning, I would love for you to stand and yes. give the brother a welcome. Amen. Brother Francis Mindy from the Gambia. Yes. I'm 
glad to be here this morning to fellowship with you people. In God's presence, we are one family. That's right. Yeah. Regardless of where you come from, your color, or your race, Amen. we are one family. That's right. It's a honor for me to be here this morning. Okay. Pastor, thank you for allowing me to use your pulpit. Amen. Amen. Brethren, we are in the right place. The ark. This was the ark Noah used to get the children of God yeah. to God. Yeah. So if you are here and you don't and you miss heaven, blame yourself. <laughs> Amen. Uh, I'm from Africa, just like what my brother said. I met with him some years back. And I believe it was God that brought us together. Amen. Uh, since I met with him, it has been a blessing in my life and the ministry back home in Africa. Uh, Gambia is a small country in West Africa. Um, a Muslim country. What we talk about, the Muslims you have there, they are not like the ISIS. <laughs> they are friendly people. We used to have 5% uh, Christians and then 95 Muslims. But we thank God because he's breaking the ground. Amen. And today as I'm speaking, we are 85% Islam and 15% Christians. Christianity is growing. It is not my own doing, but Jehovah that we are serving. For he said, go into the world. He doesn't say go to the booth. He said, go into the world. And who are the people that are going to meet in the world? The people, the children of God, that have been suppressed to come to God's glory. Amen. Amen. God is using me back home to do the work, not in the cities or in the towns, but in the villages. Villages in Africa, most of them don't have the opportunity to know who Jesus really is. Africa, before the coming of the gospel to Africa, Africans, we have our culture. And that is worshiping idols, the devils. Yeah. That was our culture before the coming of the gospel. Amen. And can you imagine someone who has been years worshiping the devil? You come into them and say, Look, God loves you. It's, it's something very funny. But with God, it is possible. Yes. Yes. I am from a family that worshiped idols. And uh, when I first gave my heart to Christ, it was a big challenge. I lost my dad. I was raised up by my uncle. And when I gave my life, he has to send me out of the family. It's not like here. Here, America is blessed. God has given America everything. But still, people cannot realize who they are in the Lord. With us in Africa, it's a different thing. When God picks you out and place you on a solid rock, you know where you come from. You will never want to go back. Because worshiping idols is like you are being tied. You are being suppressed. Your rights of freedom and serving God have been seized by the devil. And when God picks you out from there, you will never want to go back there again. I have some few pictures that I just want to show the work that we are doing back home in Africa. If you can look at the screen. That picture, uh, two years back, the Lord led me to a village. Uh, if you have been reading history, you might have read about Roots or Kunta Kinte. He's from Africa and originally he's from Gambia. And the Lord led me to his village to go and preach the gospel. It's a Muslim village. 
The Lord said us there, when, when we get there, we don't have anywhere to sleep. We slept in a public school, on benches and tables. And every morning we get to the we will get out to the village, from house to house, preach to them about Jesus Christ. Some will tell us, no, we don't need it. But some will say, yes, I want to know about Jesus. Then we talk to them about Jesus. Those guys here, that those women, after having an encounter with those with that brother, they accept Jesus. Wow, and he led them to Christ. Amen. They are from Muslim background. This is why we had a crusade in the village, uh, one of the village that never also heard about Jesus. The Lord sent us there and go to the crusade in that village that night. And people came out in numbers because they want to know who is Jesus. And a good number of them gave their life to Jesus. Amen. In 2010, sorry, 2010, uh, Pastor Freddy from uh, North Carolina here came to Gambia to preach the gospel. He came with 14 young men from his church. And when he came, he said, look, I want to go to a place where nobody has ever been to. And the Lord directed us to take him to a village called Jambanjeli. When we get to this village, there was no church. We hold a two days crusade there. People gave their lives to Christ. People who were sick were are, we are healed. Amen. A small child, they brought a small child there whose family we are worshiping idols. Yeah, the child has a skin disease. That child was prayed for and the child was healed instantly. And from there, the parents of that child surrendered their lives to Jesus. Today, the father of the child goes with me everywhere to preach the gospel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, since then, we started worshiping in that village, but we don't have a building by then. We worship under the trees. That is why you could see trees around. And then, uh, during the summer, when it rains, it's always a problem. At times, we'll be in the middle of the service, rain will just come. We just have to pack our Bibles to avoid them being wet. But that does not stop us from serving God. Amen. 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 So if I'm speaking fast, just put your hand up so that I will. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Uh, we are colonized by the British. So I believe there is a small difference in the language. Amen. Amen. That was in one of the crusades also in the village. Listen, in Africa, people want to know God. Yes. Those of you here who are fortunate to go to Africa as missionaries, you can testify it. Africa, people want to know God. Many people in Africa don't have the opportunity to know who God is. They might be hearing, oh, God, 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 but what God can do for them, they don't know. But the Bible says, go into the world. Go into the world and preach. Amen. Our ministry is a young ministry. That just started. We are just 15 years old now. Uh, anytime God leads us to a village for crusade, we obey God, regardless of what we obey God. Uh, normally, when we are going, we need to get vehicle, higher vehicles because we don't have cars like here. Everybody drives their own car. It's a different thing in Africa. We have to hire cars that will transport people to the crusade ground, bring them back, and also hire equipment like what you have in here. With us in our church, we use our hands towards yeah. God. Yeah. Yeah. We don't have guitars and other things. We use our hands. And God really moves. For he said, use everything you have to worship your God. Amen. So those cars, we, rent, we hire them, we use them for the program. During the crusade, those women standing, 
altar call was made and they came out to surrender their life to Jesus. These are people who were worshiping idols. All they know in their life is worshiping idols. But when they heard about Jesus, when we told them who Jesus Christ is, God now break the chain Amen. that has been holding them captive. Amen. And they came out and surrendered their lives to Jesus. Amen. That is one of the crusades. People sat under the trees. This was the last crusade we held in one of the village. This village they, are, they had a spirit in the village that controls the village. And when we get there, they say, look, we have our own spirit here that is controlling our village, so we don't need God. We don't, we don't need your God. We say, please, God has something for your people. Just listen to him. And they allow us that night. It was a great night. God break that chain. Yeah, God break that spirit that was holding the village captive. Amen. The following morning, they told us, look, what did you people have? When you people left this night, that night, yesterday night, something happens to the village. Our spirit no more function. We say, praise God. <laughs> man yeah. past man. That one day got married for about nine years. She has no child. She has been going from one place to an another, seeking for powers, for help, for the fruit of the womb. That is going to the devils. Yeah. Because that's what we believe in Africa. You go to the devil to seek for a child. The devil will give you the child. He may give you the child, but that child will not live. Because that child doesn't belong to this world. Is a spiritual child. The child will come after a period, he or she will die. This lady, when we had the crusade, when he had the crusade, she came there. When altar call was made, she came out, surrendered her life to Jesus. We prayed for her, we break the chain. The following year, she got pregnant. Now she has a baby child with her. Amen. Amen. We thank God it's not us, but God That's right. can do it for everybody. That's right. Hallelujah. Amen. In Africa, we, when we say worship God, we use every means. We dance for the Lord. You see those young men dancing for God with joy on their face. Regardless whether you have materials or not, with God, all things are possible. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. The lady in, uh, is it blue? The lady comes from a village in Kasamas. Uh, Kasamas is another country. It's a region in a country that borders with Gambia. If you go to the map, if you Google on the map, on the western part of Africa, you will see a small tip there. That's this country. It's a small Gambia. It's a small country. Uh, we are surrounded by another country called Senegal. Senegal, they speak French. On three sides, on the north, south, and east. But on the west is the Atlantic Ocean. So Gambia is the closest country in Africa to America. It's just a matter of crossing the Atlantic, you are in America. It takes about eight hours flight to get here. God led me to a village in Casamas. That's the region of Senegal. Casamas, this region, they are fighting for their independence from the north. That is armed rebellion. They have been fighting this war for years. Even as I'm speaking now, they are still fighting. And God sent me to a village in that region. I don't know the village. I was just praying in the morning. God sent me, son, I want you to go to this village. So 
So when I ask people, do you know this name? Do you know this village where can I trace this village? They say, oh, it is in Casamas. I said, what? <laughs> 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 this is a place where there is armed rebellion. And God sent me there. I don't think it's God. <laughs> <laughs> but that was just a fear yeah. that started coming into me. Yeah. And that fear was coming from the devil. Yeah. But I just said, God, let your will be done. I put it into prayer, and God said, my son, I said, go. Yeah. I will be with you. Amen. I went to the church, I told the brother in the church, no, God said I should go to this place. And most of the young men that I'm also bringing up said, look, we are going with you. I said, going to a place where there is more, taking people's children. It's not safe. But I just thank God. We went into five days prayer and fasting, dry, dry fasting. When we took off, when we get to the border, our immigration officer said, look, you people are not going. You know that place is dangerous. I said, look, we are going. It's our life. He said, and one of them said, look, who is leading you? I said, I'm leading the group. Then he said, are you sure you are coming back? I said, we are coming back in three days. <laughs> I know my God. Yes, yes. Amen. Amen. I said, we are coming back in three days. The one of them said, okay, if you still insist that you are going, now you are going to fill this form. So let us know that you, you are the one taking them. Whatever happens, you will be responsible. I said, yes, sir. I did what they said. We left. We are passing military checkpoints. We went up to a point whereby we met with these armed rebels. They stopped us and said, where are you people going? Where are you from? We said, we are from Gambia. And what did you come to find here? Uh, we are here with the good news. Good news. What did they say? You are a pastor? I said, yes, sir. Then we remove our Bible. We said, we don't have anything. It's all our Bibles that we have here with us. And the one of them, among the rebels, I think he's from a Christian family, I don't know, but he must have heard about Jesus. He said, okay, you just pray for us. I said, we will pray. If it is God's will, let it be done. We went to this village. This village, they never heard about Jesus. And when we get there that evening, we went to our village, greet the people, we told them our mission. They, were, they welcome us. That night we hold a Bible study with them. We teach them about Jesus. And some people came out, gave their lives to Jesus Christ, Amen. of which that woman was part of it. But the most amazing thing in that village, there was a particular family. The head of that family went into a covenant with the idols. The idols give him what he want, what he has to be in return. That is the danger of worshiping the devil. And the agreement was, every year, between June, July, and August, one of his child must be sacrificed to the idols. After we had that Bible study with them in the, in the evening, one of them came and told us what was happening in the family. We said, it is over. Yeah. Yeah. God sent us here. We believe it is because of your family. To save your family. And I'm telling you, it is over. Yeah. 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 Sunday morning, they said, look, you people are not going home because our plan was to go on Thursday, come back on Saturday to attend service back home in the Gambia. We went by land, very rough road. And they said, look, you people are going to stay here, have service with us on Sunday. We said, praise God. We held a first service with the village. We prayed for that family. And as I'm speaking to you, three years now, no death has been announced in that family. Amen. If God sends you, don't harden your heart. Obey the voice 
of God. He will go with you. He will never leave you alone. And he will guide your paths. Amen. I went with that group. And that was the evening Bible study that we had with, that we had with them. And we made an altar call. They came out and gave their life to Christ. That young man, Alejandro, is from the same family. He was the one who told us what happens with what is happening with their family, what they were going through. And then we just encouraged him, gave him some words from the Bible. And we told him it is over. And that young man followed us now everywhere we had crusade. He will cross from their country, Senegal, and come to Gambia to join the fellowship. That was the first service we held with them in the village on Sunday morning. See, the whole village came out. It's not a big village, it's just, it's just a small village. They came out to receive and to know God in their lives. That is the family that has been going through that problem. The old man sitting at the back there is the head, head, of, the, head of that family. He was the one who went into that covenant. But we thank God that covenant has been broken. Yes, in Jesus. Amen. This was during the service in the morning that we had with them in the village. That's me and my wife. Praise the Lord. Uh, as I said earlier on, we used to worship under the trees. Um, we thank God, after a while, we started raising fun to put up the building. And we are able to put up that building. Though it is not complete, it's not finished, but we started using it to avoid the rain. That's me and my family. I have four, four kids, two boys and two girls. See that young man <laughs> dancing for the Lord. Yeah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. This young lady has been going through a lot of spiritual challenges in her life. When she had, and had a crusade in the village, she came, she came there. When altar call was made, she came out crying. Because they told her that she's going to die. But what is not possible with man, with God, it is possible. Then God said to her, you will not die, you will live. And today, she's living, living happily, serving the Lord. That's, the, that's my house where I live in, with my family. Uh, back home, I have only four kids, as I said, with my wife, but I kept about 10 people in my house. The problem, most of these people, when you witness to them, when they give their life to Christ, as I said earlier on, at times your family will abandon you. They will disown you. And for them not to go back to the same wall, I choose to bring them to my house. To stay with me, we see how whatever little we have, to keep them in the Lord. Amen. I thank God, God helped me and I started putting up another house where I can accommodate many people that have been left because of the gospel. It is not like here. In Africa, there are times when you choose to serve God, you go through challenges. Here, God has given America all that you need. God has blessed America, but how many millions of people that are still on the streets not going to church? We in Africa, we know how, how important America is to the world. And we always pray for America. Let me tell you people, we always pray for America. Because we know 
if America is to lose the ground of serving God, it will affect the whole world. Because America has a lot of missionaries in Africa. America is doing a lot of God's work in Africa. This is why the devil is fighting everything to bring America down. But we thank God. Yes. Yes. America has risen up. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. When we went to Kunta Quintas village, that's the group I went with. When we get there, we divide ourselves into two sections. Some go to the other side, some goes to the other side to preach to the people in the village. We get those teasers as an identity so that they will know where we come from and what is our mission. Amen. All these young men, it was during our crusades in various villages, they gave their lives to Jesus. And since then, that fire has been born in them. And anywhere you want to go, they want to follow us. Today, they are filled with the power to serve God. Most of them are preaching, as I'm speaking. When we get to that village, Kunda Kinder's village, we preach during the day at night. We had a film show. We saw Jesus' film to the village. And those people you could see sitting there, they are all Muslims. But they came out to watch the film, to know who is Jesus. And after which we made an altar call, some of them gave their life to Jesus. That is where we used to serve God under the tree. Every Sunday we gather there to serve God under the trees. How many Americans will be, will be willing to serve God under the tree? Where I live and the church is about three to four miles. And every Sunday we walk on our foot to go to church. We don't look at the distance, but we are looking at what we are going to get from there. Yes, the fruit of life. Yeah. Just as I said, not everybody in Africa has cars or can even drive. But we, because we know who God is in our lives, we walk that distance to the church to and fro to serve God. How many will be willing to walk a quarter a mile to the church here? If you don't have your car, you, you choose to stay at home. When we get to the village, those are the tables we sleep on at night. We don't have beds. We just join the tables together. We sleep on them just because of the gospel. Oh. <laughs> we went to a village to preach the gospel. When we are coming back at night, we met with a snake. But we have to kill him. Yeah. I don't like snake. I don't like snake. Just as I said, we walk about four miles to the church every Sunday. You can see those women and there's a group behind walking to the church on a Sunday morning. We, we, are, we are doing it because we know where God picked us from. And we know what he is doing in our lives. <coughs> because the church is young and we don't have the finance to do the work, so we, the young men in the church, we come together make blocks for the building. And we use donkey car to help us fetch water that we use to put the, to put the blocks. And women also help us to fetch water, carry water on their head. How many women will be willing to carry a bucket of water on their head? <laughs> African women are less. They are strong. Yeah. Amen. Amen. God now led me to a, another country in Guinea, it's called Guinea Bissau. It's a Portuguese speaking country. I have to pass through Senegal to get to that country. And when I get there, we started a house fellowship with them. There was a brother who was staying with me in my house. 
because he was rejected because of the gospel. And he was in my house, I sent him back to school. He finished school and then, he's from Guinea Bissau. And the Lord said, tell this boy to go. Go with him and start my work in their country. Guinea Bissau, this is a country that does not know anything about God. All they know is worshiping idols, starting from the government down to the last person. If you don't have God, I'm sorry. You want to go there and tell them about Jesus, they will kill you. Yeah. But the Lord sent me there. I went there, I met with this family. And they welcomed us. We started a Bible study with them. And we started a house fellowship with them now. And doing God's work in Africa is very, very difficult. You need to get the resources. And this country being a, a Portuguese speaking country, you cannot send a missionary to the place without supporting the person. You need to support the missionary. And what God laid our hearts is to start a school in that, com in that community, an English school, that will, students coming to that school will pay fees that will be used to support the work. But we don't have, we need a, a, a church, we need a mission house, we need a school and a land that will accommodate all those things to start all the work. But we started the school, children will gather outside under the tree, they teach them, they close, they go home, park, park all the chairs. But we are trusting God that he will provide the means for us to be able to get them a school where they can learn to worship God. Yes. Because we are not only teaching them academics, but we are also teaching them about God. Amen. So that before they leave the place, they will now be equipped with the word of God. Yeah. They can also go out and disciple. Amen. That's a video uh, that summarizes the work. We get missionaries that are coming to the Gambia from every part of this world. That's one of the crusades we had in the village with one missionary who came from UK. You see the number of people that are out to know God in their lives. Those are the children ministry dancing for the Lord. We had baptism in the village in one of the village at the Atlantic Ocean. That's the Ocean. All those young men line up, all gave their life to Jesus, and they received the baptism of the Holy Ghost. These are young men in the youth ministry in the church. They dress in their own color to, to celebrate Jesus. It is good to know God. When you have God, you are free. If you don't have God, it's like you are under the suppression of the devil. You'll be doing things thinking that you are doing the right thing, not knowing that you are doing the wrong thing. But when you have God, he directs your path. He leads you to the right directions. That's my senior pastor. He lives in the city, but I'm in one of the town doing the work in the villages. That is uh, part his, he's, a, he's an American missionary who came to the Gambia with uh, Pastor Kelo. Kelo is, is also from North or South Carolina here. Those are other men of God.
the work is needed in Africa. I believe America, you heard about Jesus for years now. But how many of you are ready to give your life to Jesus? How many, of, how many Americans are ready to go into the world? A lot of you are ready to go to the world, but most of you are still in the world. Doing things of the world. Thinking they are doing the right thing. We need to reach out to the people with the gospel of Jesus Christ. There's another American missionary who came to the Gambia. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We are hoping to build, to put up a, a church that will sit about 1,500 people. Because Muslims are giving their lives to Jesus. And they need to get a house where to worship God. Just as I said, if you are here and you don't, and you miss heaven, you have to blame yourself, not your pastor. Because he's giving you all that God has given him to give you. And be in the ark. You, I don't think you should miss heaven. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Can you turn our Bibles to the book of Luke 10? I just want us to share something small. Luke chapter 10, verse 30 to 37. The danger of the worldliness. Worldliness. <laughs> Hallelujah. Jesus teach about this parable of the good Samaritan to the people. For us to know where we belong to, where we come from, and where we are heading to. Jesus Christ said, there was a certain man. This man left Jerusalem. Going down to Jericho. Brethren, Jesus Christ used this parable to let us know that people are leaving the house of God, going back to the world. He used Jerusalem to demonstrate, to tell us that Jerusalem here represents the church. And Jericho represents the world. He said a certain man left Jerusalem, left the house of God, going back to the world, thinking that is where he can get everything. Brethren, it, it is a joy for us to be in the house of God. Yes. It, it, you, have, you have peace when you are in the house of God. If you don't have God, you are like a, like a, a hungry lion looking for food. Because the Bible says the devil is, is moving around every day like a hungry lion looking for whom to destroy. So if you are in the world, you are like a hungry lion. And just like I said, this man left the church and went back to the world. And he said, he went down. That is, he was sinking with the things of the world. He was going down with the things of the world, thinking that that is where he can get his pleasure. Thinking that is where he can get his joy. Brethren, may we not leave the house of God. May we remain in the house of God until God returns. Because when you give your back to God, 
the devil now arrests you. And when the devil arrests you, he will start suppressing you. He will start pushing you down. Using all kinds of means that he can use to keep you, push you down so that you will not go back to God. And that's why Jesus Christ said, this man left Jerusalem, going back to Jericho, going down to Jericho, and on his way, hallelujah, he met with what? With robbers, with thieves, with criminals. These are, these are the devils. When you, when you choose to go back to the world, when you start now walking back to the world, you, what will welcome you is the devil. The devil will now welcome you. And when the devil welcomes you, he will start suppressing you down. So that you will not go back to God. And this man was going through challenges. The Bible said he was beaten to almost death. That is, the devil now controls your mind. The devil now twists your mind away from God. And when you don't have God, brethren, you are like a dead man. You'll be walking, but you are like a dead man because you don't have any protection again in your life. But when you have God, anywhere you go to, God is with you. And the Bible says, this man was beaten to have death. He was left unattended. A priest came, he left him. Why? Because he heard about Jesus, but he chose to go back to the world. Let us not go back to the world. The world is full of hungry lions. The devil is doing everything possible to get us away from the presence of God. But God has given us every opportunity. He has given us the power. He said, in my name, you can move the mountain. Yeah. He said, in my name, every knee shall bow. That is, even when challenges come your way, we should know that God is God. We should know that God loves you. We should know that God loves us. And with God, all things are possible. Yes, what we may think is not possible, just take it to God and see what God is going to do for you. When you have challenges, he said, bring your load to me and I'll give you rest. But if you take your load to the devil, you have to pay the devil. That's how the devil operates. You take your letter to the devil, he will take it for you, yeah. but you have to pay him. Yeah. And paying the devil is your life. Yeah. Come on. Right. But with God, all that we need to give him is to appreciate him, thank him for what he has done for us. This man chose to leave the house of God. Maybe the preaching was too hard with him. He may think that the preaching is hard and he chose to go back to the world where he can enjoy himself. That, he, that was what he was thinking of. Not knowing that he is now going into the worst place in life. How many people are being killed on the streets of America? How many people have been starved on the streets of America? How many people have been left homeless in the streets of America? Because they don't have God. Because the devil is in control of their lives. Because the Bible said, Thou shalt not kill. Why should you kill? Something must have led you to kill. If you are not a soldier, if you are a soldier, you are in the battlefield, you have to. But not on the street. Taking guns, killing one another. That is what we are finding in the world. That is what is in the world. But God calls us and picks us out from the world to himself, to his house. But this certain man chose to go back to the world and he, he, what, he, what welcomes him in the world was disaster. 
The devil now took total control of his life. But one thing, the Bible said, a good Samaritan was passing by, hallelujah. Amen. And he saw this man. And who was that good Samaritan? That was Jesus Christ himself. Amen. Because we were sinners. We were under the hands of the devil. We were being suppressed by the devil. But Jesus Christ came and laid down his life for us. And saved us on the cross of Calvary. And that was the good Samaritan. When he, came, when he saw this man going through that challenge, he laid down his life for him. Hallelujah. Yeah. And saved him. Brethren, God loves us. God Allow his son to come and die on the cross because of our sins. The sins that he does not know anything about. This good Samaritan, this man chose to leave the house of God. If you look at it, many people that left the house of God and went back to the world are going through challenges. Are going through difficulties. Because God is no more with them. And if you don't have God, you don't have life. It's better for you to even die. Because you will suffer on that and get to hellfire. But when you have God, even when you die, there is a source of salvation. Hallelujah. I always tell people, God is leading me to places that never heard about Jesus, that I'm not safe, but I know even if I'm to die, I, I am 100% sure of getting, the, getting to heaven. Yes. Because I am doing the work of he that sends me. That's right. And he is the king of kings. Come on. Amen. Because his government never changed. That's right. The Bible says his government is on his shoulder. But anywhere he goes, the government is, is with him. Yes. It's not like our worldly government. That's right. Obama came, he's gone. That's right. Trump is in. His time will finish, he will go. But the government of God does That's not change. That's right. And when you have that God with you, you are safe. The president of the world can, of a country can come and change his own policy. That may not suit you. Another one can come and change his own. That may suit you. But that of Jesus Christ is the same God of yesterday, is the same God of today, and is the same God of tomorrow. He does not change. His government does not change. This certain man chooses to go back to the world. Brethren, we need God. We need God in our lives. We are now in the end time. When I entered into the church, I felt the presence of God in the house. I know God is here. God is here. Pastor, this church is not a small church. You are seeing the building as a small church, but this church is a big church. God is not interested in the multitude, but is interested in the few that are ready that are kingdom focused, that are ready to go with him into his father's house. And that is what is here. So I don't see it as a small church. It's a big church. Those that we say, oh, these are big churches. They have like number. But what is there? You don't find God there. I believe in where I can find God. Yes. God put this church here for a purpose. And that purpose will be fulfilled in Jesus' name. Amen. Many will come to know God from this community. Many will come to know God. God does things at his own appointed time. He knows why he put this church here. He knows why he gave it the name, the ark. That whoever enters here, will never go back the same. 
all, all those who have been Noah in the ark, all of them witness. All of them get to the heaven. None of them was left astray. Because they believe they are serving the living God. And that's why God said, no one serves him and he remains to be the same. He changes your life. And God is ready to walk in this church. He's going to do greater things in this house. Just allow God. Receive him in your heart. Allow him to walk in you. You will see what he's going to do. Hallelujah. There is God here. God is here. I felt the spirit of God here. And that is what we need. You go to a place and you don't experience God there. Leave. Yes. Leave. If I go to church and I felt God is not there, I leave. I went to a church uh, four years back in Atlanta. I was invited there. A friend of mine was invited and I went with him. When we get there, my spirit said, my son, this is not the place I want you to be. I went out. I sat outside until they finished. I told my brother, let's go home. Because I don't want my spirit to be polluted. Come on. Yeah. 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 When you listen to God, he will direct your path. Right. We have a lot of churches, but only few are doing the work of God. We need to obey the Spirit of God. We, we need to listen to the directives God that God is giving to us. I'm from Africa, as I said. I'm a black man. But God connects me with Brother John. I now have a family, a brother from a different family. And today I have a bigger family here from a different mother. This is God. If not God, I will not know you people. You will not know me. But God connects his people together. That's right. Yeah. That's right. God will not connect his children to wrong people. God does not do that. God will connect you to his own people. I was one time in one of the village to preach. A lady came there who, who has a devil spirit. She said, look, you, can, you are not going to preach here. I said, I'm going to preach. <laughs> because my country is a democratic country and we are given that right, that freedom to worship God <coughs> where we want to. I said to him, as long as people are here to listen to, I am going to preach. And she said, okay, we are going to see whether it is your God or my spirit that can control. I said, okay, good. <laughs> <laughs> this is now the worshippers of Baal and Elijah. I said, okay. She went back to her house, did some incantation, and then sent one brother to come to attack us. And this brother, whilst we are in the service, I saw him coming with a cutlass. Am I clear? Are you getting me right? Yeah. He came to a cutlass. As he was coming, the Lord said to me, that man is coming to attack you, yeah. but I am going to arrest him. Come on. Yeah. Yeah. I said, God, let your will be done. Yeah. As he was coming, approaching us, when he, when he reached to where we are doing our, Bible, our service, he stood with Red eyes looking at us. I was also looking at him. I said, God, you sent us here and manifest yourself. The man dropped the cutlass and walked into the congregation and gave his life to Jesus. Wow. It is not me, but he who lives in me is greater 
than what is in the world. Amen. When you have God, you don't fear anything. Amen. The Bible says, fear the one that can kill the spirit, yes. but not the one that can do with the flesh. The flesh is going back to where it comes from. That's right. Amen. But the spirit is going back to God. Yes. And it's only God that can do with your spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's bow our heads as we pray. Father, I thank you this morning. Lord, I thank you for whom you are, Lord. I thank you, Father, for bringing us together once again under your umbrella to worship you. Lord, as we are here, Lord, Lord, we thank you for the word that you have given us. The Lord, this word of life that you have given us will not pass us by, Lord. Will not go astray, Lord, but it will be in our lives, oh Lord, Father, for the rest of the week in the name of Jesus. Mighty Jehovah, Lord, we thank you for all that you have done for us. Yes, we thank you, Lord, for bringing us together yes. as a family, Lord, Father, God, yes. to worship you, Lord. Yes. Lord, we know you are the only God yes. who is worthy to be praised, O Lord. Yes. There is no other God. Right. There is no other name yes. above your name, O Lord. Yes. For you said that I am that I am, O Lord. Yes. You are the beginning and the end, O Lord. Yes. Father, we thank you. Yes. I thank you for this church, O Lord, Father. Yes. I pray and ask for breakthrough in this church in the name of Jesus. The Lord, he who steps his foot in this house will never go back the same in the name of Jesus. Mighty Jehovah Lord, I pray and ask for divine favor upon this community, Lord Father God. The Lord, men will come out, Lord Father, to surrender their lives unto you, Lord Father God. The Lord, this church, Lord Father, will not be able to accommodate the people, Lord Father God. Lord, I know you are going to do it, Lord Father God. I thank you, Father, for the life of the pastor. His brethren, so Lord Father, the presbytery, Lord Father, and the entire congregation. The Lord has they open the door for your kingdom. You. Lord, let your kingdom halfway over this community. You. Let your name be glorified in this community. You. Let your name be arrested every person in this community in the name of Jesus. The Lord, your peace, your love will reign in this community, Lord Father God. No whatsoever violent trouble that is taking place within America. Lord, it will not be hard in this community. Lord, this community shall belong to you in the name of Jesus. Yes. Father, I know you are the only God who can do it. Yes, For there is no other God, there is no other name other than your name, O oh Lord. You say that your word will never go out and come back empty. Right. Father, I know your word will be hard in this community in the name of Jesus. Yes. Lord, I thank you. Yes. I give you glory. glory I know you are the only God who can do it. For in Jesus' mighty name I pray. Amen. 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 Sorry, uh, if you may have a question to ask me about Africa or the work in Africa, you are free to ask me. Amen.